Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Alexis Garcia and Ed Carson here to break down the market action for today's session on Tuesday, December 26th. And Ed, stocks moving higher to kick off the final trading week of 2023. And you know we've been waiting for a pause, but it seems like pullback be damned. The Santa Claus rally is got its foot on the gas, wants to go. Can't fight Santa. I mean, there are reasons to be cautious, and we'll talk about that. Uh, but I want to take a look at a few stocks that are acting pretty well: App Lovin, CBOE Global Markets, and Netflix. All right. Well, we will get to those three names, but first, let's check in on the major indexes. The Nasdaq closing the day up five tenths of a percent. The S and P 500 also closing the day, getting near uh, record highs. That was up four tenths of a percent. The Dow Jones also up four tenths of a percent. And small caps really leading the way up 1.5% today. So, Ed, let's dive in and take a closer look at the NASDAQ. Uh, really good volume and action here today. And again, uh, seems uh, extended. It's 8% above that 50-day line. What are you seeing here? Yeah, I mean, we got it back above the 15,000 level. Uh, but there are various measures uh, that suggest that maybe the markets may be overbought by some, some standards, uh, like the, also the percentage of stocks that are above, say, the 200-day line or the 50-day line. And yes, the uh, the 50-day line, the NASDAQ is more than 8% above that. Those are all indications that maybe we're getting a little stretched. Uh, maybe the reason why we're not seeing the selling is one reason why there's the Santa Claus rally is that the sellers say, you know what, I'm just going to wait until January. I'm going to wait until then and sell because I, then I won't have to pay taxes on my winnings and for another year. And so that's one reason why we have a Santa Claus rally. And we've had a lot of big winners. So people might say, I don't want to pay taxes on my 100% winner. Uh, so there's that. So that would be one reason why you know, you may want to be cautious right now. So one uh, because there's a good chance that you could see some tax selling. So uh, but still, the broader picture is the market's looking good. Uh, it's been acting very well since the end of October. And uh, so, you know, that's all, you know, longer term, a, a very positive, positive look for the market. And speaking of positive, let's take a look at the S&P 500. Again, that inching closer to record highs today. Yeah, it's right about 1% off of those highs. So this would be, again, a natural area where you might expect some resistance. You know, it could happen. Doesn't mean it has to happen. We, you know, back when the rally started, we were saying there was all sorts of resistance levels that just didn't provide much resistance. So it doesn't have to. Uh, but it's just something to note. The Dow already hit record highs. The S and P is coming up. Uh, really impressive end to, end to the year, and really, it's been an impressive year. So nice to see. All right, let's take a look at the Dow really quickly. And as you said hitting highs up again today, but in lighter volume, uh, anything here investors should be taking note of? No, uh, this is all, it's all showing pretty broad base gains. And while this didn't go above Wednesday's high, it still recouped most of the losses from that, whereas the S&P and the NASDAQ did get back, get above Wednesday's highs, uh, at least intraday today. All right, well, let's jump on over to small caps then and take a look at IWM. And Ed, again, this one's been going like gangbusters and really getting uh, powerfully above that 200 level is where we've been looking. Uh, it seemed like it hit resistance there a couple of times this year, but really strong move um, above that level. Yeah, really decisive in this area. And small caps are finally having a moment. It's been a long time since you could even see like more than a couple of weeks, it seems like, of outperforming the S&P 500. This is the relative strength line. Obviously, you've been struggling for a long time versus the broader market. Uh, but small caps doing well, getting above these key levels, showing a real breadth to this market rally. All right, well, let's take a look really quickly at the 10-year Treasury yield. That was down slightly today, still hovering around those five-month lows. And Ed, what are you seeing in terms of this chart? I mean, it's been, this is why the rally has been going on. Uh, right now, there's not a whole lot. It seems to be stabilizing. We, we seem to be in a inflation is coming down. It's not where we want it to be, but it's coming down. The economy seems to be in a soft landing, not going to hit the recession. So maybe we can stabilize here. And I think that would probably be just fine for, for stocks uh, if we can stay at these kind of levels, uh, rather as long as we don't race back towards the 5% level. All right, let's take a look at some sectors then, uh, starting with software, IGV. 
Uh, that up, you know, slightly today up three tenths of a percent, uh, extended from a buy point here in mid November. But again, good to see software still trudging along here. Yeah, trudging along. And some of the smaller names that you know are doing even better. This is dominated by Adobe and Microsoft, with which have been sort of moving sideways for a while. I mean, there's a this is a very strong sector, even stronger than this ETF uh, would suggest, which is pretty strong. All right, let's take a quick look at semiconductors then with SMH. And that went also a nice gain today, up about 1.4%. Again, uh, slightly extended from this recent buy zone. But I would figure most of the move today coming from Intel, uh, which popped uh, on news that it would receive a grant to build a chip facility in Israel. Yeah, there was Intel, but there's actually a lot of strength in NVIDIA, which is the biggest weight that was up. Taiwan Semi, which is probably the number two. A lot of names were up pretty solidly. There was a pretty broad-based uh, chip strength, which is great for the market because everything has chips. Uh, so this this was a positive, you know, back above new highs. Pause for a little bit. Maybe there was a few handles in there. Maybe a few things that could could buy. But yeah, this this ETF itself is extended. All right, let's take a look at industrials then XLI really quickly. Again, a nice day today, up about seven tenths of a percent in a buy zone from that recent uh, cup base. Yeah, so it just keeps on moving along. A lot of strength here uh, shows you it's not just tech. All right, we'll just take a quick look at metals and mining XME. Uh, another positive day here. And as you've been talking about this, this market rally really broadening across a bunch of sectors here. Yeah, didn't make a huge move, but it's like, but boy, what a move it's had the last couple of weeks and really had been sort of going sideways. And then all of a sudden it's, it's we're joining, we're taking part in a way that they really hadn't. And uh, so, yeah, really nice move there. All right, Ed, well, let's get to the stocks that you talked about, starting with app loving. This one, uh, basing here over the last few days, looks like it's pulling back, perhaps forming a handle here. Yeah, so it hasn't handled, formed that handle yet. It needs one more day on a daily chart, and then it would have a handle. And uh, of course, just because it's forming a handle doesn't mean that handle will form it. Just because the handle's formed doesn't mean it'll work. So it's not a guarantee. But we had strong volume. There's a strong move up here. Most of this was on higher volume. There's one average volume day. And now it's come down on lighter volume. So it's just is like pretty much what you'd like to see uh, pausing here. Uh, you'd like to see it stabilize, you know, and then start forming up. But not, mu not much of a savings, but it's shaking out some maybe some weak holders, providing a slightly lower buy point if it can after one more day. Uh, this has been doing pretty well. It's, it's uh, shifting towards, you know, profitability you know, in a big way this year. We haven't even really seen it yet. So uh, apparently like, you know, uh, should be some really strong growth in the final quarter. Uh, the revenue's turning positive again. And often with software companies, you get that shift over into uh, into profitability. It really takes off because every dollar, basically like the margins on software are so high that once you start turning a profit, it really ramps up. Uh, this was our stock of the day today. Just something to be watching, uh, you know, as waiting for that that move of a possible breakout. All right, let's take a look at CBOE. That's a global options exchange. This one uh, down about a percent today, uh, kind of uh, coming close to that 50-day line. Um, what action are you seeing here? Yeah, it's coming down the 50 day line. It's hit a little resistance at the 21 day. I drew this trend line. You can sort of see like if it comes decisively above the 21 day line, still pretty close to the 50 day, it'd be breaking that trend line. That would provide an opportunity to buy. It would be the first test of the 50 day line since it really broke out in this area. And uh, it is maybe you could arguably say it's the second test of the 10 week line, but the first or second test of the 50 day 10 week line, because you sort of tested back here. But the first or second test of the 50 day slash 10 week line after a breakout can be a place to start a position or add to shares. Uh, and this is also several weeks into a possible consolidation. So, uh, you know, this could soon form a new base after a strong run. Uh, this is this has been an area that's been doing quite well. Options are really hot. These zero like zero day option trades have really, uh, you know, lit a fire for, for that. So that there's a lot of hope for, for growth on that aspect as well. All right, let's take a look at Netflix then, NFLX. 
that one. Also, uh, just trading slightly uh, above a buy point here after a recent consolidation. Uh, this one finished the day near intraday highs up about nine tenths of a percent. Yeah. And uh, the buy point here is more like 482.70. It's not showing up, It's a, but it's a handle. So that would, doesn't really change anything. It's like less than a percent. It's still just holding slightly in a buy zone. There's a lot of stocks like this, and like Datadog, Microsoft. There's a lot of stocks that are sort of holding in a buy zone, which has the advantage right now of you're letting the moving averages catch up a little bit. Uh, you know, it would be great if this could hold off for another week or so, like wait until next next year, you know, uh, and then and then maybe make a move or then then the 21 day might be catching up quite a bit more. Uh, but nice action here. This seems to be the streaming winner. I mean, everybody is like nobody, you know, everybody else like yeah, they're having trouble making money. They're having trouble attracting subscribers. They're starting to give in and license content to Netflix again. So the whole idea of like. Uh, you know, some of that stuff that made them exclusive, they're sort of giving up. Uh, so Netflix seems to be emerging this uh, well. Other other streaming services probably don't have that much content in 2024, but Netflix is just going to bring us a bunch of international stuff and take licensed content from other people. They, they turned uh, Suits into a hit. It was a middling <laughs> show from USA Network from 10 years ago, but now suddenly it's new to you. Uh, so that's the power of Netflix. Um, so real winner here. Uh, strong growth in a buy zone, uh, been consolidating nicely. You know, and as you said, you can definitely see that in uh, the earnings and sales growth acceleration over the last quarter or so uh, and projected uh, earnings growth of 23% next year. So definitely doing something right here, Ed, as we enter the prime Netflix and chill season. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's definitely a great season. It's again with with nobody else putting out new shows for a while. It seems like it'll be a permanent Netflix and chill season. All right, Ed. Well, thanks so much. And that's it for today. We'll be back with more market analysis tomorrow morning, starting with IBD Live. You can head on over to investors.com slash IBD Live for all the details there. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow after the close.